Hey there, I'm excited to announce this to you today. This is what you've been waiting for in your spiritual quest. This is something I've wanted to do for a long time, and I'm finally ready to announce it that it's ready to go. It's the Grief to Growth Community Circle. Now, this is a sanctuary where like-minded souls are united in their journey through grief and towards personal transformation. It's more than just a place. It's a beginning. It's a commitment to growth and understanding. Here you're finding not just a community, but you're entering a circle of trust and depth. You're going to engage with interactive coursework. You'll dive into exclusive podcast episodes and partake in discussions that illuminate the path from mourning to empowerment. This is a realm where every question is honored and every individual's journey is validated. To be part of this exclusive circle, visit us at grieftogrowth.com slash community or look for the chat icon at the bottom of every page on the main website. Remember, the entry is a privilege because I want to ensure that every member is as dedicated and genuine as you are. You must apply to join, but the journey within is worth every step. So go ahead and join us today. Check it out, grieftogrowth.com slash community, and I look forward to seeing you there. Hi there. Welcome to Grief to Growth Podcast. Your host is Brian Smith, spiritual seeker, best-selling author, grief survivor, and life coach. Brian believes that the worst tragedies of life provide the greatest opportunity for growth. Brian says he was planted, not buried, and he is here to help you grow where you've been planted by the difficulties in life. In each episode, Brian and his guests will share what has helped them to survive and thrive. It is his sincere hope this episode helps you today. Come, what we were always meant to be. We feel like we've been buried, but what if... Like a seed, we've been planted. And having been planted, we grow to become a mighty tree. Now, open your eyes. Open your eyes to this way of viewing life. Come with me as we explore your true, infinite, eternal nature. This is Grief to Growth, and I am your host, Brian Smith. Hey, everybody, this is Brian back with another episode of Grief Today, Grief to Growth. And today I've got with me Petia Kolobova. And she, Petia is a life coach. She focuses on women uh, and she helps women to live a more abundant life. Uh, so she's a women's transformational coach who helps women who have been pushed down and have been playing it small due to toxic relationships or unhealed child, childhood trauma to create a life that is true to them and to their sole purpose. And her, her mission is is to help women who are on their path to healing from these past wounds to move through their limiting beliefs and internal blocks so they can finally do what they want to do, to do what feels good to them, and to serve women in a powerful way online. Uh, She pairs feminine flow with strategic planning to give entrepreneurs immense clarity, and she gives them exact steps to transition from a side hustler to a CEO. Uh, Petia also has a podcast. It's called Unapologetically Abundant, so you can check that out. and when she's not doing that, she's working out, she's reading, or she's in nature disconnecting from the world and connecting to herself. So with that, I want to welcome Petia to Grief to Growth. Thank you so much, Brian, for having me. I'm so excited for today's talk. Yeah, I'm really glad to meet you. You're a really radiant person. I love your, your energy that you put out. I checked out your, your website a little bit, and I see what you do as far as working with women. Um, so I guess the first question I have for you is, You say you work with women. So why is it you chose to work with women and how how did you come to that decision? I love that question, Brian. Thank you. And, you know, when people ask me and I will just widen it a little bit, the question, you know, like broadening it up a little bit, it's why did I became coach? Mm -hmm. And the reason is that I needed someone like me on my journey, whether I realized it or not. So why I became coach is because I needed somebody like that. I needed someone to hold my hand, give me a hope when I was going through my darkest times, when I was going through eating disorder, depression, attempt of suicide, anxiety, and being in toxic relationships and the worst relationship, of course, with myself. So why I chosen to work with women was because I felt very, very alive. When I was working with women, I felt like this is what I'm meant to do. It felt right. I used to work with men and women Mm-hmm. And I love helping people. So gender, never mind. If I can help someone, I will. But what I love specializing in women, it's because 
I know how it feels like. I know oh, how, it, how it is to be one. So I became the one that I needed on my journey. And now when I see other women, the deep connections that you can really create, it really lights me up. And it's, it feels like coming back home. Hmm. So um, you, you mentioned that you have overcome some things yourself. And I think personally, as, as people who are coaches, um, I think that's beneficial because we, we can relate to our clients as to what they're going through. So what types of things did you go through and how did you work your way out of those? Hmm. I absolutely agree with that, you know, Brian, because I feel that it makes us relatable, right? That people can trust us because I remember when I moved to United States from Europe, I went once to the gym and I'm like, oh, let me try something new. I never did spin classes. I walk into the spin class and there was a very overweight instructor and I looked at him and I'm like, why should I be taking spin classes if it will make me look like this, right? And I know this might be like very judgmental thought, but it was my first thought. I can always choose the second one. But my first one, it's like, I cannot relate to you, right? I want to have better energy. I want to have like leaner ties. This is what I want to be doing it. Then I couldn't relate to him. And he was even playing like a very hardcore metal music. I'm like, yeah, no, I don't think I will ever take this class. And listen, because it's my not my style, it doesn't mean that it's wrong, but it doesn't resonate with me. Right. So when we overcome our, and it doesn't have to be even darkness, it's like the way we are living our life. And when we are being true to who we really are, that makes us relatable to other people. For example, I just started to work, and this is something I have never done before, but this week I started to work with youth, with a girl who is 14. Her mom is my client, and she wanted me to work with her. And when I was speaking with her, I could see myself. I knew how she felt. I knew that she has no one to talk to. I knew she's feeling like she doesn't belong. I knew how challenging it can be for her to express herself and how serving she's trying to be for everyone and I could see her path clearly ahead of me if she doesn't change us mm -hmm. so I wish that everyone would step onto the personal development and spiritual development journey because I feel that's why we came here we came here to grow we came here to evolve not to sit in one place and remain the same Right? right. So I feel that when we become vulnerable and share our stories, you never know who is listening. And it can be in your mind, completely like meaningless story, right? Like, for example, when I share with you right now about the fitness instructor, right? It can seem completely meaningless, but somebody can be listening right now. And they're like, oh my gosh, I had the same experience, right? And now they're listening more carefully. Now they're tuned in. Now they're going to be paying more attention. So you never know who you're influencing around you because you never know who needs to hear you and who can connect only with you. Yeah, so, I think that, that's a really great point. You know, the thing is about, you know, anybody can, can put up a sign and say they're, they're a coach. But, you know, people want to know what's your life experience? How can you relate to me? Because when we're going through these things, often we feel alone. Uh, we feel like I'm the only one that's, that's gone through this. We, we, we know that we're not, but we do. We feel like we're alone. And it's, and it's really great to talk to someone who has overcome these things. And so, it's, you know, when we share our stories, our personal stories about what we've been through, it's not, it's not self-indulgent. It's, it's so that the person's yeah. listening to us. And say, yeah, I can overcome this too. We can be an inspiration. I love that you said that it's not self-indulgent, right? Because um, it's fascinating. Today, I was doing a post on my Instagram and I post, so my fiance, um, he always makes me feel special. We are together over three years, but it just feels like at the beginning. He surprises me with like, buys me my favorite kombucha, or I just find this, like there is a love note on my uh, on my microphone because he knew I will have later on today interview. So he put a note and I am so in awe with how beautifully he's treating me because I never experienced that before. I share it with my tribe. I took a picture of that and I posted it on my stories 
And right after I posted it, my first thought was like, oh, this could seem like show off, right? That was my first thought. Mm -hmm. Second thought, I'm like, my people would never think that. My people know my heart and I know I'm inspiring women into seeing what is possible. So like you said, right? It might feel like, oh, this is self-indulgent. You like speaking about yourself. You like speaking your stories. But I, in my heart, truly believe it is our responsibility to step up, to show up because there are still people suffering in darkness, in quiet. And I know how I felt. I was always surrounded by noise, by people. I would never want to be by myself because when I was by myself, I felt so lonely and I would, you know, overindulge in food. I, um, I was, I used to struggle with bulimia for 18 years since the age of 11. I used to hate myself. I used to hate my body. It went that far that when I was 18, I ran away from home and I attempted a suicide a few months later because I said like, why? Like, why bother? If this is life, I don't want to live it. Yeah. So it's, it's not going to be relatable to everybody, but those who are going through these doubts and fears and are feeling alone, they need to hear this. They need to hear that there is a hope, there is a light, and there are people who walk that path before them. And even if they don't want to work with me, great. It's okay. You can listen to my podcast. You can go to my free Facebook group. Look and find the hope. Look and find what really resonates with you. Because like I mentioned, I truly feel it's our responsibility when you are feeling better to share that. What helped you? What supported you on your journey? Because like I said, you never know who is listening and who is at that point that they are really losing their hope. Like for example, my uncle, 15 years ago, he did suicide. Mm-hmm. He, you know, so you never know who is on that edge because most of the time you cannot tell. If you would have looked at my life 10, 20 years ago, you would think that my life is great. Yeah. And I was yeah. empty and dying inside. That that's a that's an excellent point. And I, I think it's why it's important for again, especially us that are that are quote leaders to be uh transparent. I, I watched the interview this past weekend with Prince Harry and and Megan. And he was saying how he felt trapped in his life. And, you know, Oprah kind of looked at him like, what do you mean you, you felt trapped? You're a prince. You're born in the royalty. So we, we project on the other people that their lives are all great. Mm-hmm. And, and we think, you know, I'm the only one, again, this, this loneliness you talk about is I'm the only one going through these problems. I, I can never overcome them. I don't see any light at the end of the tunnel. You know, this is never going to get better for me. So they need people like you to say, yeah, it, it can get better. Okay. And let me, let me show you the path on how it can get better. Absolutely. And again, you got to find the people that you really resonate with, because what I also find on my journey, me personally, and also women that I work with, it's so easy to lose yourself, right? We lose ourselves in a service, but from place of fear, it's not from place of love. And let me explain you the difference. Mm-hmm. The place of fear is when you're giving yourself, when you're giving your time, when you're giving your energy and money to others, because you think that if you don't do that, you're going to be left behind, you're going to be abandoned, you're going to be judged, you know, so it's this fear of missing out, the fear of not belonging, why we're doing the things. I have been that person to giving from place of fear for over three decades. Hmm. Yeah, And it always brought me back into feeling <clears throat> empty and alone, right? So when I started to be shifting, I realized there's also place of giving from place of love. When you are giving from the overflow, I take care of me. I'm feeling well. I can take care of you. Because if I first take care of you and listen, there are emergencies and sometimes you just get to put yourself on the side when something happens in a family or something happens. Mm -hmm. I get that, but it's not day-to-day thing. That's what we usually do, day-to-day thing. We prioritize our friends, family, everybody else, our bosses or our employees, right? And then you're like, oh yeah, when I have a time, I will do something for me. But that's scarcity. Yeah. That's thinking that... Go ahead. Do you think that's something that impacts women more than men? Stay with us. We'll be right back. 
Hey there, something I want to tell you about today. My podcast platform, Buzzsprout, has recently made it easier for me to allow you to support me financially. Go to www.grieftogrowth.com slash subscribe. That's grief, the number two, growth.com slash subscribe. And once you're there, you can sign up to support me financially. Now, you can do it for as little as $3 a month or, of course, as much as you'd like. If you do that, you'll get access to bonus episodes, and you'll see those in the regular feed. They'll have a lock on them. But when you become a subscriber, you'll actually get access to your own private feed, and you'll be able to listen to the regular podcast along with the bonus podcast for the subscribers. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for sharing the podcast. And I want to thank those of you who support me financially. Have a great day and on to the episode. Oh, that's a really beautiful question. And in my experience, I feel that women are the way I was raised and the woman that I work with, I feel that we are raised to shut off our feelings. We are raised to shut up and serve. We are raised to be there for everybody else because women are supposed to be the one who are taking care of others. Women are supposed to be the one who are nurturing. Men are going through different things, right? Men are Mm -hmm. also shutting off their feelings. Men are under so much pressure because they're supposed to be the protector, the provider, the one who fixes everything, the one who knows all the answers. So men are under so much pressure Mm -hmm. of society. It's, I just feel that it's different kind of pressure. And women, we were crazy enough to say, I can do it all. Let me be the mother. Let me be the wife. Let me be the working at home. Let me be the working outside of the home. And I will have the perfect body and everything. So we have different kind of pressure, right? Mm -hmm. We are thinking we are super women and then we are burning out because we don't remember like, hey, how about I take care of me first? I see in men and I don't, I, I saw it in many men and please don't like quote me like every man, right? I'm not generalizing here. But I feel that with men, there is this like innate sense of survivor. I will take care of me first. Then I know I can fix and help everybody else. And I was always jealous of that. I'm like, wow, this is so amazing. I thought it's selfish, but now I see that it's amazing. It's brilliant. It's like, let me take care of me. Let me feed myself. Let me take care of first me. Let me, you know, now I need to sleep. Now I need to eat. You know, like, I don't know if you ever noticed, like, I don't know who you're living with or what is your environment, Mm -hmm. but I notice with women, we say like, oh, I go to sleep. Two hours later, we're still doing something. We're doing the dishes. We're doing the laundry. We're getting ready things for tomorrow. Men says, I go to sleep and he's snoring five minutes later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's different pressure. Yeah, I think it's um and, and I don't think it's genetic. I think it's socialization, as you, yep. as you touched on. It's men are taught one way and women are taught another way. And it's interesting, most of my clients are women. And so that's one of the reasons I asked you the question. I have very few men, because men don't take care of their emotional health or their or their mental yeah. health. So they will just try to tough it out. Mm-hmm. Women will try to go get help, but I, one of the universal things I have to tell them is. You have to take care of yourself first, you know, and, and they're and they push back on it because, well, that's that's being selfish, you know, mm-hmm. and I've, I've got to take care of my kids and I got to be I got to be there for my husband. But as you said, if we if if we fall into that trap, then we burn out. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there. I've done that. And, you know, also what happens when you say like, oh, I cannot do that. I have kids like you don't understand. I have a family. I got to take care of my husband and work and blah, blah, blah. The thing is that you will build the resentment. You will. It doesn't matter how much you love them. When you're tired, when you're frustrated, that's when you will leash out. I can promise you. Mm -hmm. You won't be loving. You won't be like nurturing as you can when you're on two, running on two hours of sleep. I think it's very important to ask for help men or women, you get to ask for help. And one thing that I love, it's when people get really aware of what makes them feel alive, what really lights them up, what are the things that weigh them down. I, for example, I used to be always dreaming of somebody like helping me with the household because I can do it. Come on, everybody can clean, right? Mm -hmm. But for me, it's like three, four hours a week that I'm investing in that. 
And I'm like, it really makes me feel drained and tired and like resentful because I don't want to be doing that. So when I could right away, when I could even probably before I could, I hired help, you know, just a couple times a month, come in, do the deep cleaning, you know, I will do the superficial every single day, but it feels so freeing. It feels so freeing. And I feel like I'm circulating money in such a beautiful way because I'm investing in somebody's livelihood. Mm, yeah, I'm sure. supporting somebody else's life. Why should I be doing something that drains me? In those four hours, I can lay in my hammock and relax, or I can connect with other women. I can create, con- uh, you know, like podcast or inspiring content that is going to be helping others, but I will be lit up. And that's what people care about. We all have times that we are feeling like down. We are feeling tired. We are like, just turn me off, right? We, we, we put our phones to recharge every night, right? Yeah. But when do we recharge ourselves? We yeah. don't have like a buttery sign on our front head. <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny you said that because that's, that's something I say to every client. I said to a client earlier today, we are, we are like batteries. You know, we are rechargeable batteries. And I, again, I think especially women, that's who I work with, tend to just think I can go, 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 go. And then as you said, it's resent, it's resentment uh, and it's burnout and, and just not living your, your best life. And I, you know, you've got to figure out what brings me joy and what's a, a beneficial use of my time. So I love what you just said there. Yeah, absolutely. Because just think about it. There are people, oh my gosh. So I have a client, we just started to work together like a couple of weeks ago and she was telling me we're starting her online business. Yeah. And she's telling me, you know, like I love organizing. I love organizing homes and I love organizing clothes. And I'm like, do you want to fly to Vegas to organize my, my, my house? Can you come please? Because a couple of weeks ago, I was telling my fiance, we have beautiful home, right? But it's only three bedrooms. And we're like two offices out of that three bedrooms. And I'm like, I wish I could have somebody who can come and organize because I can do it again. It takes time and it doesn't light me up. And she was like, you should see her. She was so lit up. I was like, oh, I love doing this and this. And when I see it finalized, I'm like, um, can I fly you to Vegas? <laughs> you see what I mean? It's you never know. So I would really invite the listeners who are listening right now, create it list, like really sit down and be honest with yourself. Because very often we are doing the things that we could be doing, or we feel like we should be doing right. Or, oh, I don't have time or money. I cannot afford it. Can you afford to be unwell? Can you afford to attract this ease? Can you afford not to spend time with your family? Yeah. Yeah. You know, can you? (laughs) <laughs> that's that's a great point because that can be a lot more expensive than taking care of ourselves and and we will get to a point where the universe or our higher selves or our bodies will shut us down <laughs> you know i've heard it said you know it's like a tap on the shoulder then it's like a, a head over the head <laughs> and we, you know, it's really learning to have that life balance which sounds like something that you really can help people you know focus on so your your clients that come to you are they typically is it early in their business? So one customer, one client is just starting up. So when do people come to you? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi there. I'm really excited to tell you about my latest ebook. It's four lessons that you can learn from the near death experience without going through all the trouble of dying to learn them. I've been studying NDEs for several years now. I am completely convinced that not only are they 100% real, but that there's some very universal wisdom that we can get from the near-death experience. And I've distilled that down in this book into four short lessons. And I've also given you all the reasons why I believe the NDEs are absolutely real. So go to www.grieftogrowth.com slash NDE lessons to pick it up for free www.grief the number two growth.com slash NDE lessons. I hope you enjoy it. Um, people come to me when they feel that they are stuck, that they know there is more in their life. You know, like when you wake up with the feeling that is this it? I know there must be more women who are not truly living their truth, who are not expressing themselves. Some of my clients, they do start their online businesses. I think it's just the age and, you know, DNA that we date and age that we're living in. Mm-hmm. 
Some of them, they just want to feel better. Some of them, they just want to wake up in the morning and feel excited. They want to feel the zest for life. They want to attract love of their life. They want to create a balance in their life. So women come to me when they're feeling like enough, it's enough. Yeah, like yeah. they look at me and they're like, I want a life like that. I want to be free to be me. I want to be expressing myself and I want to do whatever I want to do in my own time. And that's what I can help them do, whether you build a business or not. But curiously enough, women that I'm attracting in my life, they want to be helping others. Hmm, yeah. All of them, all of them, whether you have business or not, they want to be helping others. I have nurses, you know, I have coaches, I have healers, but I also have moms or I have, I have a client who is working in casino, but I can promise you the theme that she's uplifting in that casino, her coworkers, they will never feel the same after the shift with her. You know, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point too, because a lot of times people, as they start to look for, because I noticed you had one of the things we talked about earlier, you, you put in when we were talking uh, online earlier was about core values. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people are like, I don't know what my core values are. Um, so can you help people with that, that question? Absolutely. And I love that you're asking me that, Brian, because that like that was literally thing that shifted and changed and bettered my life because I really didn't know what I stand for. I was outsourcing my happiness. I was outsourcing my, my worthiness. I was looking outside of me to others. What should I be doing, right? So back a few years ago, I hired a coach, man, and he helped me to create my core values. What do I really stand for? So I would love to share with your listeners, very easy exercise. Mm -hmm. um, so they can listen and pause it and do or do it after they're listening to this episode. But just take a big sheet of paper and divide it in two and take a pen and take a highlighter. And on one side, you will write down the things you don't stand for. I think that hate, it's a very strong word, but it would be similar to that. Things that you just can't stand. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, you will write the opposite and you will write 20 things on each side. So for example, I don't stand for hate. I stand for love. I don't stand for cheating. I stand for loyalty. And you will just go back and forth 20 times on each side. And then you take the highlighter or different colored pen and you will highlight three things on what you do stand for. There are your non-negotiables. You cannot live by those. And when I did this exercise, Brian, and I look at the paper and I look at my life, it didn't match. Mm -hmm. It didn't. So my core values are loyalty, generosity, and growth. Okay. Yeah. I look at my business back then. Back then I had social media marketing management company agency. I look at my relationship. I look at my clients and I'm like, what am I doing? I realized that none of that was really a reflection of who I truly am and what do I stand for. Mm -hmm. So I let go of my clients, let go of my business, went into side hustle. And I was, you know, personal trainer, meditation teacher. I was uh, um, helping a local TV show producer as her assistant. I just, I, I couldn't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I couldn't because it wasn't me anymore. Let go of my relationship and I'm not sharing this for people to like, you know, like screw it all. I'm out. It's not that easy, but for me, I couldn't take it any longer. So I was just like slowly releasing. Right. So when I did that, I realized what do I do want in my life and who I really am. And when opportunity or person came into my life, it was easier because I had that list visible. It's not only about doing the exercise and put it somewhere in your drawer. Right. It's not going to do anything. You get to take inventory of your life and see if it matches. And then I had it on the mirror in my bathroom. I had it in my office and I put it on my own business card, my core values, I wrote it down by hand and put it in my wallet. So mm. I see it every single time I reach for money or I'm in a bathroom, you know, like seeing it, being reminded. And then when people come, it's easier, I'm not saying easy, but easier for you to say no. And I started to be a heck yes and heck no person. Mm -hmm. And it's so freeing, so freeing because that's the moment that you embody who are you unapologetically and the universe, God source, whatever you believe in, 
will start bringing you the people and the opportunities that do match those values. All of my clients now match those values. Maybe it's not like their top top priority, but I can guarantee you they match those values. All my clients are generous. All my clients are loyal. All my clients are grow-oriented. My fan said the same. He's non-negotiable. It's a growth. And he is very loyal and very generous person. Even if it's not top three, the growth, it's one of his top three. Mm -hmm. So when you know who you are and what you stand for, it will start mirroring back to you. So if there is something that doesn't feel good or right in your life, take inventory of your life first, of your values. Yeah, I love the way you you put that because, you know, as you were saying that, it reminded me of, you know, we hear a lot about the law of attraction and it's, it's a pretty controversial subject and, and, and I was talking about you know, vision boards and stuff like that. I don't know what, you, what your beliefs are on that, but, you know, to at least know what we want, you know, and, and to write that down and to start looking for those things and to start saying, I know what I don't want also, mm-hmm. and then making a plan. And this is where a, a coach could really be beneficial. It's helping us figure those things out. And then how do I make a plan to get from where I am, you know, to where I, where I want to be? Mm, I I have three vision boards, so <laughs> I believe it works. And it's so funny. Yeah, like love of attraction can be controversial, but for me, it's like logical, right? There is a love of gravity and like, is it controversial or no? It's working and that's it, right? Like there can be like... It can work for each of us, depending on our beliefs and our background. It will be like different, but it works. Whatever you focus on, you will get it in your life, right? And then we can go layers and layers deeper, like why bad things are happening to good people, right? Mm -hmm. That would be like another episode. But uh, I do believe in love of attraction and I do have a vision board and I believe that when we, and I love what you say, like we get to know what we do want and what we don't want. And it's fascinating because sometimes when I ask my clients, what do they really truly desire and want? They, they like, they don't know, right? Like it's so easy, like, oh, I want a new house or whatever, right? Or I want a different job, but what do you truly, truly desire? It's so much easier to say what you don't want. So you can just start there. You can start there, look around yourself and write what you don't want. And then like, okay, now that I know what I don't want, now I know what I do want. Yes. But it's interesting when you, when you talked about your values, write down your values, uh, again, going back to the the whole law of attraction thing, a lot of people write down, I want to live in Maui. I want to have a big, they talk about material things. I want a big car, you know, I want stuff like that. But you, you spoke first of values. What do I, what do I value? You know? Yeah. I, you know, like, what do I want material things? Material things are amazing. Trust me. I love having my computer. I love having the freedom to, I retired my mom, right? Like I love being abundantly paid to be me, but mm-hmm. it's not the money that makes me feel fulfilled. That's just a tool. It's right. just amplify things, right? It's all about the feeling. Right. But I really, really desired, you know, when I started to work, like, on myself and all my desires was freedom and happiness and fulfillment and joy. So I tapped into the feeling first and then I'm like, well, it would be nice to have this, but show me, right? Right. Because I don't know, like, I don't know what's better for me. Listen, when I was doing like my, uh, when I was attracting the love of my life and that's why I also believe in love of attraction. I manifested him. I know that. Um, (laughs) I was journaling and I didn't say like he's six foot tall and he has brown eyes and brown hair, whatever. I didn't. I journal about I'm so happy and thankful now that I'm loving loyal relationship with a man who is family oriented, who adores me, who treats me like the only one and the queen, who loves shopping, who loves because what men loves shopping? Let's let's be real. Yeah. Uh, who loves going to nature, who is healthy and all these things, right? And then when I manifested my love, I I wouldn't like logically I would never like go for him right he's younger he doesn't look like the description I would put in together you know it's like no 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 thank you but he made me feel all those things right and right. it's so much better than I ever imagined in my life so tap into the feeling what is you know one thing that I always guide my clients it's 
what is your desire? And then ask yourself, what is the essence of it? For example, my desire that it's on my vision board right now, it's a white Volvo, it's a SUV, it's a XC60. I was debating between 60 and 90, 61. <laughs> um, it's on my vision board. My vision board, it's actually on my phone. Ah, okay, okay. So I always see that. And... I want that or something even better, right? It's a material thing. But when I ask myself, what is that I truly desire? Why do I really want it is, is the safety. It's Volvo. I have Volvo, another Volvo for 12 years. Is the comfort, is the safety, is the freedom. I see myself riding with the family when we have a baby next year or whenever after next year, you know, like being all family there and feeling spacious. So that's what I desire. Right. And I'm not going to get stuck. Listen, if somebody knocks on my door and says, like, hey, sorry, like, I'm moving and I need to sell this BMW. Would you be interested? You know, I'm like, let's go, right? It, yes. It's not, um, I'm not stuck up on something because I'm like, it's this or nothing. We'll get back to grief to growth in just a few seconds. Did you know that Brian is an author and a life coach? If you're grieving or know someone who is grieving, his book, Grief to Growth, is a best-selling, easy-to-read book that might help you or someone you know. People work with Brian as a life coach to break through barriers and live their best lives. You can find out more about Brian and what he offers at www.grieftogrowth.com, www.grief, the number two, growth.com, or text GROWTH, G-R-O-W-T-H, to 31996. If you'd like to support this podcast, visit www.patreon.com slash grief to growth, www.patreon.com slash G-R-I-E-F, the number two, G-R-O-W-T-H, to make a financial contribution. And now, back to grief to growth. Yeah, I, I love what you said. You know, it, it's this or something better. And it's, it's really the feeling and how it serves me as opposed to this one particular, you know, thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, that's, that, that I think is where everything, you know, we can, we can, we can mix up everything and we can, we can exaggerate it and we can, we can, um, you know, I, I've seen some coaches say, if you work with me, I guarantee you, you're going to have a six figure income and you're going to have this and you're, and, and that's focusing on the on the material, which is missing the entire point of why we're doing this, why we're why we're here, right? What you just said earlier, we're we're here for a purpose. It's so fascinating. I'm so happy that you brought it up because when I was starting as a coach, um, I, I gotta share. Like I felt inadequate because what I can promise is that my clients will transform. They will feel different. They will attract better things into their life. They will create more joy and spaciousness and freedom. But I could not promise them five-figure months or six-figure business, right? I'm not that type of coach. Does it happen? Yeah. One of my clients, 10 times her income, another triple it. Another one, when she started to work with me after two weeks, she's an artist, incredible artist. She sold in those three weeks like she haven't sold in a year, right? Mm -hmm. but I, I, I'm not advertising that, right? It's not that. And my mentor, she's a millionaire. She became a millionaire in nine months when she started her business, right? But she's a marketing and business coach. So women come to her because they do want to have six and seven figure businesses. And when I started my coaching, I felt inadequate because I'm like, well, I cannot promise women to have a six figures. Can it happen? Yeah. Can I help them? Yeah. Well, but can I promise it and guarantee it? No. Like, how can you guarantee anything, right? Like that, it's like, no. So now I know how much more important is the feeling and it's the mindset. Because if you don't feel fulfilled and free, the six figures is not going to help you. Yeah, that, that is also a great point. Because, you know, the, the, the thing about people, we design these things because we think it's going to make us happy. You know, money is going to make us happy. The Volvo is going to make us happy. But what people find out when they get there is, is actually, as a matter of fact, when you get to a certain level of income, our happiness starts to drop off. I mean, people, um, they, they actually are less satisfied with their lives um, because they realize this is not really the thing that I wanted. What I really wanted was the feeling, the security, the, the love, the fulfillment from the work that I'm doing. And then the other stuff kind of follows from that. 
Absolutely. And, and like you said, it's if, if we focus on the end goal, we are always going to be living in a when land. When I have the car, when I have the baby, when I have the house, when, when, when. Mm. And you really lose out on the most important thing. And it's the now. And it's the presence. For example, um, when I was in Europe, I invested four weeks in being with my grandma. And then the fourth week, she had a stroke. But when I was there, I was so present. Of course, I still work a little bit, but I usually work when she went to take a nap or I told like she was sitting there with me. I kept reminding myself, be present, be present, be present. And I'm so happy I did. Because then, you know, she had a stroke, she was taken to the hospital, she couldn't speak anymore. But when she could, when we were together, we were looking for wedding dresses for my wedding this year. We're looking at bridal hair. That time it's priceless, Brian. Yeah. Absolutely. I would never forgive myself like, okay, I could make 10K more this week if I would be on a sales call. I have more than enough money. But the time with her, it's priceless. And, you know, I'm a big, big fan of money. You know, I really am. I used to have such a crappy relationship with money. You know, I thought that only people who are taking advantage of others, like have money and only people who are bad people have money. That's how I, you know, grew up and what I kept seeing. But now I realize on my journey that when good people have money, they can do great things. Like with my fiance, we're supporting kids in Bali. We're sending money monthly. I can retire my mom. I can now take care of my grandma and make her life easier. So it's not this or that. I'm living in a world this and that. Because if you focus only on the freedom and the joy and the fulfillment, it was like money, I don't need the money, like money is bad or I don't care about the money. Is that really, really true, right? Or if you focus only on the money and it's like, oh, when I have the money, then I will feel free. It's not this or that. You get to marry those two. You get to marry those two and really give yourself permission. Like money, it's such a like... So it's a sensitive topic, right? Like, it's like, you cannot even ask like how much money you're making to people, right? It's it's like, oh my gosh, like that's like such a taboo, like why, right? It's, I feel that we get to tap into the freedom of self-expression with anything and everything that feels right to us, right? Respecting everybody, but knowing that you can make a great money and have an amazing life and be fulfilled, when you are really true to who you really are. Yeah, I, I love what you said about that. And it, and it is, we often have a, a terrible relationship with money one way or the other. Either we're focused just on the money or, or I work with a lot of people that are spiritual, that are healers, that are, that are mediums, that are you know, light workers, for lack of a better word. And then we, a lot of them have like a negative relationship with money. Well, I don't, and people will say, why do you charge? You know, why do you, or why do you charge so much? People will ask you, you know, why do you charge? Why do you, why do you need so much money um, when you're doing this type of work? But if you're, they don't ask a doctor that, they don't ask a lawyer that. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes people, when they're in this business, I, we, I think we kind of have a block against charging too much money or making too much money. Absolutely. And I see that in my clients too. And I was experiencing it too at the beginning because it came to me really easily. It came to me really easily to work with women and like, just see the path for them. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I started working, I was charging like hundred dollars a session. Right. And I would go and meet my clients and drive there and meet them. We with them, you know, usually it is over an hour. It's not like 60 minutes, we're on a clock and like in therapy, like get out of my door. I have a next patient. Um, And then driving back home. So we're talking about like two hours, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now I'm charging 800. And the more I'm doing this, the more I'm charging because it's my time. I'm investing in myself. I'm investing in my mentors. I'm investing in my growth and courses. And I also learned that when people invest, they're invested. Most of my life, I was giving people advice for free because I wanted to help. What do you think they did with that? They probably didn't do anything with it. Exactly, exactly. You know, so it's not always like that. Like I had clients who really, really, really wanted to work with me and they just weren't in a place to do that. So, okay, start with my podcast, start with my Facebook, start with my online courses. It's $100 or $500 for my courses. Go and run with it, right? Mm -hmm. But you, you cannot live your gift and feel guilty 
and being supportive, right? The money comes through people, but it comes from the universe or from God. You want abundance? You want to be supported? You want to live your gift? You get to have money for that, right? To feel comfortable. And who cares if you're making thousand dollars, ten thousand, or hundred thousand, or million dollars a month, right? Whatever suits you, whatever makes you feel fulfilled. And I truly believe that more money you make, again, it's amplifying who you really are, right? But the more money good people make, the more we can help and unite and help those in need. So why not? You, There is this saying, you cannot help poor people by being poor. Mm-hmm. Because then you can donate your time and energy. And that's beautiful. We got to start somewhere. But there's only 24 hours. How many people you can really help within 24 hours with two hands? Yeah. yeah. When you have money, you can you can invest in other people. Like right now, I have a team of people that are working with me and I absolutely love and adore them. And I'm so appreciative of them. I'm supporting their livelihood. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do that when I was starting my business. So by you making money, you're helping more people. So it's selfish not to charge. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. And I, and I love what you're saying because you know, some of the questions I was going to ask you is like, how do we overcome the limiting beliefs we have? And I think we've already kind of gotten into that. So what else would you like to say about how do I, how do I, What is an abundance mindset? How do I get it? How do I overcome these blocks that I've got? Yeah, abundance mindset. I feel that, let's look at the opposite. The opposite is scarcity mindset, feeling that there is not enough. There is not enough time. There is not enough money. You are not enough, right? That's also scarcity mindset, been then done in all of them. (laughs) So tested it for you. The abundance mindset is the trust. Is the trust that there is power bigger than you, that you are always provided, guided, supported, whatever you believe in. You know, you can be skeptical and go read the scientist's book and they will tell you that it works anyway, right? So believing in something bigger than yourself, it's going to put you in a ease and in a flow and in a trust. And when you relax, it's when really it can come. So the abundance mindset for me, it's about surrender and trusting. And really living in your truth and living in your light and sharing your gifts, right? So that's abundance mindset for me. And how to get it, it's, again, go back to the core values. You got to know who you really are. Go into what you do like, what you don't like, what would you like to delegate? What would you like to do more of? Because I remember it was like six, seven years ago. I had a clarity with one coach and he's now like really like big in the industry, but back then he was just, a, you know, just starting. So we had a clarity call and like 15 minutes, 20 minutes in our call, he was like, okay, so when are you going to write a book? And when are you going to co- finally coach women? Back then I had my social media marketing business. I'm like, I cannot coach women. I don't have all my stuff together. My life, it's not in order. I cannot do that. Look at me now. Now I'm doing it. He could see the vision in me, right? But back then I'm like, who am I to to like do that? So you really got to know what comes to you easily. What are your gifts? What people come to you for? I want to share one story. We were just hosting a retreat in Mexico. It was called True Love in Tulum. And one of our participants, I noticed she was like, she never did this. She just like, I'm her first life coach. We are just started to work together. She's just like newbie in everything, you know? So she was like more quiet, a little bit more reserved, you know? So uh, we went for a walk and I realized she has a really nice style of clothing, like really flattering for her body. Really nice, simple, but very nice. Mm -hmm. So I complimented her. I was like, Hey, you have really nice style. I love the dresses. I love the clothes. She's like, oh, thank you so much. I love shopping. And right now she's without job. And I'm like, girl, you're really good in that. Why don't you do something about it? You know, and we just let it there, right? Next day we had a professional photographer and she was just styling a products that we were shooting for our um sponsors Mm -hmm. this girl comes in and she was like hey can i help you can i support you what if we put it here what if we put it there again styling Mm -hmm. and the photographer runs up to the second floor she was like oh my god petia you should see her she's amazing she's a great stylist she looked like so lit up by this well now we're building her styling business Mm -hmm. 
all her life she was thinking that shopping is bad because her parents told her you have to save money you can why you're shopping you're shopping again it lights her up it lights her up and she's so alive so you get to start asking yourself what comes to me easily for her it's shopping i don't like shopping i, I like nice things but I don't like shopping. I don't want to invest my time. I'm like, hey, can I give you a couple hundred dollars a month and you do it for me? And she was like, oh my God, I would love that. I was like, you do? You see what I mean? So really ask yourself what people come to you for, what comes to you easily. And that it's also a challenge, Brian. What comes to us easily, we are feeling guilty to charge for it because like, ah, that's nothing. Oh, don't worry. It took me on five minutes. Well, if somebody else would be doing it, it's maybe three hours for them yeah right yeah. yeah so goes back to knowing yourself and really knowing what lights you up because when you're lit up people can feel it like you said it brian this is like the first time we are meeting and you're like wow you are like you have such a great energy like i love that and that's what our people really attracted to to energy it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter what you say your energy speaks so much louder so start owning it yeah, I think that what you just said is a great example because I think sometimes people are like, what is a life coach? Why should I work with a life coach? What, what do they do? And, you know, there's a mis there's a misunderstanding that, okay, I'm going to go to a life coach and they're going to tell me how I should live my life. And that's that's not what we do, right? Not at all. You know, I, I don't like telling people like how to live their life. I want them to create their life. I feel like I guide them back home. I guide them back to themselves, who they truly are, to their essence. So things start to be easy and effortless. That's what it's meant to be. And listen, we are all facing our challenges, you know, like family or health or finances. There will be things that will come up. But when you do have that support, when you have the guidance, when you have a coach, you have a safe space to express yourself. And many people don't have anyone they can really talk to, Brian. They don't like their family and friends. When people choose to grow, they're feeling bad because they're leaving people behind. Yeah. yeah. Right. And sometimes you do get to like disconnect from people or sometimes you need a little bit of distance instead of seeing your friends five days a week when they're drinking and partying and you don't want to do that. You see them once a week for brunch or for lunch. Right. It's really knowing yourself and allowing yourself to evolve and allowing yourself to do the things that really light you up. Like if you would see her face, Brian, and I know you see it with your clients when they have this click, like, oh, it can be easy. Oh, I can be myself. Like, really? I was never told this right? It's like, yes, like it's, it's such a satisfying, fulfilling feeling when you, it finally clicks in your clients. It's just, it's priceless. It's priceless. And just think about it. Like if people think that, you know, like investing in coaches, it's exclusive, maybe, but what is the other option? I invested a decade of my time trying to do it all by myself. Like, nope, I got this thing. Nope, I'm good. Thank you. Books, audio, uh, podcast, motivational video, Les Brown, Tony Robbins, all of Dr. Wayne Dyer, Louis Hay, like you name it. I've done it. I've listening to it, brainwashing myself. And it was great. It helped me through my journey. And what turned my life around was having the coach who sees what I cannot see. One time, a um, guest on my podcast said that being a coach, it's like, imagine your client being in a bottle. There is a label on a bottle. They're inside. They cannot read it. The coach is on the outside and can read it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I love that. I, I love that because the thing is, um, you know, we are oftentimes so torn down by the world telling us that the thing that lights us up, the thing that, that, that we are given this unique talent that we have is not cool you know it, it's it's a bad thing and it, it takes sometimes someone outside someone who's there to be an advocate for you to say no that thing that, that everyone's told you is bad is something that's that's really good and even like friends who might be well intended a lot of times they will hold us back family doesn't like to see us change they remember us the way that we were when we were like a little kid They're like well you 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 can't do that you know um so it, the, the the thing that i find about coaching is is being able to just let people help them look inside themselves. You know, I like the label thing. I, I kind of maybe look at like a mirror. It's like, 
you can't see yourself until you look into a mirror. So as a coach, I'm kind of like the mirror to say, yeah, you're, you're a lot stronger, you know, more vibrant, more talented person than you, than you think you are, than the world has told you that you are. Yeah. I love that. I love that, you know, analogy with the mirror because you can't, and, you know, like I said, even if you can, it can take you time and, I would rather, now that I see that, I would rather invest in a coach and do it in a month instead of a decade. Yeah. Just think about it. You think like, oh, I cannot afford to have a mentor. Really? How long do you think it will take you? Because even if you think like, well, I don't need a mentor, right? Like I will deal it with with myself, right? Like I will do it. Most people, we numb one way or another. We're either shopping, we're either eating, you know, like spending money on others, on things that we really don't need mm-hmm. versus investing in yourself. Yeah. That, it's just priceless. Yeah, I, I think that, that's a really great point. And as I'm, as I'm talking to you and I'm hearing about, you know, your life experience and the time that you've invested in yourself, even going to all those other people and, and investing in yourself, I can come to you and shortcut all that, right? I can... I can benefit from from your knowledge and your experience and use it to help me build my business. I know you have like a, a master mind program, I think you call it or master heart, where you, you you mentor people, they can join a program with you. I have a I have an online courses right now. I have two mm-hmm. online courses. I used to have a membership. I don't do that anymore because it wasn't lighting me up. No, okay. So I released that, but I do have a um, couple, uh, couple online courses and then I do one-on-one because that really, really lights me up. And then throughout the year in Las Vegas, I do women's weekends um, that we are, it's like a mini retreat. And that's when we're going really deep on, you know, creating a safe environment. And then we are doing twice a year international. We did in Bali. Now we did in Mexico. We want to go back to Bali. I love Bali. It's mm-hmm. magical. So I do in person and one-on-one. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Cause everybody's a little bit different as to how, what, what lights them up. I, I worked with the guy for a year. I took a, a master program with him and it was, you know, it was basically like a group that we went through together for, you know, for a year and you can keep going with that. Um, and a lot of people will work themselves out of the one-on-one because as you said, we only have so much time, but that's what lights you up. So that's what you, you choose to do. Yep, exactly. Like I said, like I tried the group and I tried the membership. I'm like, nah, I can do it, but it, it doesn't turn me on, right? So what I really do, it's like I said, like I have my passive income in my courses that is amazing. But then what really lights me up, it's the one-on-one. And then when we do the retreats, we can bring in more people at the same time, but we're keeping it intimate. It's usually like eight, max 11 people. So it's still very intimate experience. Mm -hmm. And what I also do is I do VIP days or VIP weekends for people, women who wants more of Petya, because it's either weekend with other women retreat, or you just get me. Yeah. Like I said, like in person, Oh my gosh. I don't know. It feels like something clicks and it's just like you can do in a week or in a weekend. What would you normally do in months or in years? Like when you are hands-on experience. Yeah. So, so tell me about your courses that you offer. So if, 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 if uh, someone's listening, they're like, I want to know how I get started with Petya. Where, where, do, where do you recommend they start? The very first thing that I tell everybody to start, it's my mini course. It's called Unapologetically Worthy. And I created it because I realized that many women who come to me, the common pattern where they were not feeling worthy. They were not feeling worthy and it was reflecting in their relationship, in the money, in their health, their relationship with the body. So unapologetically worthy mini course, it's a place that I tell them to start. And if they're already in a place, they're feeling worthy and loving themselves, the next thing that women want to increase is the money, right? We already talked about it. Mm -hmm. So I have a course uh, for money, money mindset. And that is very deep, comprehensive course where I teach you easily because I like everything with ease and flow. So it's no overwhelm because when we get overwhelmed, we quit. Uh, But it's a beautiful course where I teach you what I did to create a relationship with money and how I was able to tend time my income with ease and doing less. Like I used to have four side hustles and now I work three days a week and I was able to create in a nine month six figure online coaching business with ease and with clients that I love. So now I teach women how to have relationship with money and how to create the abundance in their life. 
And do you give like, um, I, I hate the word, use the word practical, but like down, like, okay, how do I do this? You know, or is it, how, how, how deep do you go with people in terms of how they get started in a business or stuff like that? So in uh, the business and how to get started, I do it one-on-one because for each and every person is going to be different. I don't like cookie cutters, really. I don't. Like there are courses on how to start business and doing like all these things. Like I'm not that kind of person. Yeah. Right. I love being very personalized because, for example, I had a client who came to me and she was like, well, I want to be confidence and wellness coach because I'm all about health and all these things. I was like, okay right and as we go she realizes well I really don't want to do this because I like doing it but that's not the thing I want to be doing with others right so as we go we go deeper on the one-on-one coaching Mm -hmm. she built her brand she built her she starts to build her business which she realized she really wants to be doing it's working with spiritual entrepreneurs so she sells everything in the United States moves to Nicaragua and now she built a community and she loves working like community and groups. So she's now working with spiritual entrepreneurs who want to be doing the startups. So this is something she wouldn't realize through the course, Brian. Right, right. Because she would build the course for being a confidence coach. She would be doing it. And she was like, well, this sucks. Like I'm kind of doing it. I'm doing my own thing, but this is not it. And I truly believe that having a mentor who can go deep with you Mm. can really help you how to build it on your own terms. And the advantage is that I truly believe that everything is happening in our life for us. So even when I had the social media marketing agency that I don't have anymore, I still help my clients with the social media presence because what does it help you that you have a business if nobody knows about you? So I help them how to build their Facebook group, how to build their Instagram, how to build their branding. I have my team help them to get booked on a podcast or how to start your podcast so I help them with the foundation and then they can run they can fly whenever they want so I do the basics but those basics I do with 101 yeah I think that that's awesome and and you know the thing is a lot of people um if they don't have an entrepreneurial mindset it can be so overwhelming I had a friend call me the other day and she said uh, how do I start a podcast and we started talking about how to start a podcast, and then we got into and how do how do I schedule clients? And by and by the end of the, we were supposed to be a half an hour call. And we ended up going for like over an hour, and, and her eyes were just like, and I'm like, yeah, there's a lot, and so it can be very intimidating, and that's the nice thing about talking to someone who's already done it because they can they can help you shortcut. Because she's like, just tell me where I can go, like look at YouTube's and, and and videos and stuff. I'm like, instead of we doing that, why don't we talk for an hour? Because I can save you a lot of time. You could you could go look on Google, but I've already done all that. Yep. So yep. that's the nice thing about working with someone like yourself who can say, okay, yeah, I, I know how to do that. I know what to do. And I, I know, and more importantly, sometimes what not to do, you know, what yep. doesn't work. Yep. Yeah. Been there, done that too. Put my face in that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I love that. I love that we can really make other people's lives easier. And I don't know if you heard about human design. I've heard something about it. Yeah. It's like, um, it's, so I, I don't personally believe in personality tests because if I take a personality test, it depends on my mood, right? right? I will change my answers, but human design, it's very comprehensive. It's like your design, like what you were born to do, what you were born to be, right? It doesn't change us. It's very deep and it combines like uh, a different modalities, but in my human design, where it says like why I am here, it's to help people to take the shortcuts, to learn what's the easier way and teach it to others. So I'm teacher here and showing people how to build foundations and show them how to do it easier. Because I used to think, I ask my mentor, because right now I have three mentors. One of them, it's for human design. I was like, Brandy, I think I'm lazy. Because I'm working three days a week and I'm thinking how to do only two. And I love my clients. I do. But I also love my free time, right? I love reading. I love going out to nature. I love spending time with my fiance. I'm like, I feel like I'm lazy. And she's like, no, 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 no. It's in your design. You're meant to find what works the fastest and teach it to others. I was like, that makes a lot of sense, Mm -hmm. you know? And that's why mentors come in. They can help you shift the perspective and really help you see the things that really resonate with you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, as we're coming to the end of our time, 
anything else you want to say to listeners to just kind of wrap up in, in terms of our time together today? Absolutely. One thing that I used to say to myself, I created a mantra that really helped me to shift my mindset and who I really am. And it's, you are perfectly made for your purpose. You're perfectly made for your purpose. Very often we think like we're not enough. We are not doing enough. I wish I would have this. I would wish I would have that. But when you realize that everything about you is perfect and was created so you can live and fulfill your purpose. It becomes so much easier. You stop fighting that flow and you start flowing with it. So that's what I would love the listeners to remember. You're perfectly made for your purpose. Yeah, I I, I want to echo what you just said. You know, it's I was telling someone just a few days. I, I met these guys several years ago that would say that, and I would just always kind of laugh. I'm like, no, I'm not. They would say, I'm perfect. You're perfect. We're all perfect. And we, when we hear that, I think we, our natural instinct is to push back. No, I I I would like to be more like this. I would like to be more like that. You are exactly who you're supposed to be. And, and, and embrace what you've been given and what you see as your weakness might actually be your strength. Mm-hmm. And, and the things, the challenges that we've been through, the challenges that you've been through, you know, have made you the person that you, you are today. So don't ever uh, begrudge any of the things that we've gone through. Yeah, absolutely. And it's beautiful because like you said, if we say you're perfect, that could seems like definite and final, but I feel that if we can embrace that this moment is perfect and you're perfect and you will always be evolving and growing, that gives you the freedom and flexibility to keep growing. Absolutely. So where can people find you? My favorite place, it's on Instagram. Mm-hmm. That's where I'm hanging out in my stories and everywhere. Just my name, Petya Kolibova, or my Facebook group. I have close community for women. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's called Unapologetically Abundant Woman. It's just a safe space where I bring trainers or I train myself. And it's really uplifting and inspiring community for women who know they're meant for more. Awesome. I want to spell your name for everyone. It'll be in the show notes, but just for people that are just listening, it's Petia, P-E-T-I-A, Kolobova, K-O-L-I-B as in boy, O-V as in Victor, A.com. And again, that'll that'll be in the notes. It's been a it's been a real pleasure meeting you and having you share your your wisdom and your experience with our audience. Uh, just thank you for for being here. Thank you so much, Brian. I love what you're creating. I love your energy, and thank you for everything you're doing for others. It's so needed. All right, great. Well, you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for listening to Grief to Growth. Brian hopes that you find this episode helpful, and we'll come back for future episodes. Brian's best-selling book, Grief to Growth, Planted Not Buried, is a great resource for anyone who is coping with grief or knows someone who is. If you enjoy the podcast and would like to support it, there are three things you can do to help. The first is to share the podcast with someone that you think it will help. The second is to go to iTunes, rate, and review the episode. The third way you can support the podcast is by becoming a patron head over to www.patreon.com slash grief to growth. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash grief, the number two, growth, and sign up to make a small monthly donation. Patrons get access to exclusive bonus content and knowledge that you are helping to spread the message of grief to growth. For more about Brian and grief to growth, visit www.grief to growth.com. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed this latest episode of the podcast, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. What questions came up for you? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? I invite you to visit us at grieftogrowth.circle.so. That's grief the number two growth.circle.so to continue the conversation with me and with other listeners. It's a space to sound off, to share reactions, and to go deeper into the topics from the show. I look forward to chatting more, and I hope to see you there.